Hey, what's up, Zach here. And these are all the reasons why Steph Curry chose the Curry 4 Flotro over the Curry Flow 9 in this year's NBA Finals. Here we go. Now, it's no secret that Steph Curry has had issues with ankle sprains in the past. He does wear those ankle braces pretty much all the time on court. And it was a real mystery to me why Under Armour made Steph Curry a shoe with all the different features of the Curry Flow 9, which aren't that great for an ankle sprainer. And then the NBA Finals came around and these were on his foot pretty much all the time. Now, just because it is a higher ankle collar, a little more of a mid-top construction, that doesn't mean they're good for ankle sprains, as I'm sure a lot of you know. There's a lot more that goes into that technology and a high top shoe isn't going to stop an ankle sprain if you are really going and barreling over those ankle ligaments. However, there are a lot of macro and micro changes in the 4 Flotro versus the Curry Flow 9 that do make them a lot better for an ankle sprainer and just somebody with Steph Curry's footwork in general. So let's get started in the uppers. And like I just said, if you look at them side by side, the Flow 9 is a true low top and it is a very low top at that. And the 4 Flotro is a true mid top construction. However, the whole medial side of the upper uppers, as well as a little bit of the lateral side of the uppers is elastic. It is very easy to accommodate. The one thing the uppers do have though, is they do have an extra layer of paneling all the way around the shoe, but then it does come up into that mid top ankle collar and does get pretty thick here, right where your ankle ligaments are. Now that's obviously, like I said, not going to stop an ankle sprain. More importantly, it's a lot more of an accommodating upper to an ankle brace. Even though the Curry Flow 9s are very low, that UA warp upper is just not very accommodating. It doesn't break in all that well and so if you have a bulky ankle brace in there because the ankle collar is so low number one you can start to slip a little bit in it and number two just because it doesn't want to break in you're going to add bulk into the shoe and you might have some cramping especially in the midfoot in the rear foot and the lateral side of the rear foot whereas on the four flotro that ankle brace can slide right into these shoes and your forefoot here on the top of the foot can expand up a little bit and you won't get that cramping in the foot so that better security of your ankle brace will aid in ankle sprain protection but also remember Remember, an elastic high top does hug around your ankle and lower leg, and that does give you a lot more biofeedback so your body understands where your foot is in space better. It's not going to stop an ankle sprain, but it will give your brain more information on the court, and so your brain can kind of course correct better versus a shoe that doesn't have any of that where your ankle is completely exposed. And so with that elastic collar sinking the ankle brace in, as well as giving you a lot more of a tactile fit, it's no surprise that somebody with chronic ankle sprains would prefer this model versus this one. And looking at the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds high grit sandpaper, the uppers on the four Flotro really aren't all that bad. The Dremel doesn't bite through that upper layer at all, just like in the UA warp layer. But the biggest difference in durability in the uppers of the tens versus the fours comes in its resistance to tension. I've actually seen a few reports recently of the uppers of the fours starting to break down right where you pivot on the forefoot and cut uppers starting to kind of tear a little bit there. And that's because number one, you got paneling over elastic and in that area, if it's not really reinforced well, it can start to give. Whereas in Steph Curry's case, it doesn't really matter because he can get a new one of these every night versus if you're someone trying to play with these for the long term, if you're a heavier player and pivoting really hard a lot, you may start to get some early wear versus in the tens where they're all double reinforced, really strong materials, and they're not really gonna go anywhere anytime soon. But by far the biggest difference between the nines and the Flotros comes in the midsole. And it's a lot of things that the naked eye really doesn't see. Now, if you look at the tear down here of the four Flotro, first of all, you do see the lock down here in the ankle collar. It is a little bit lower of a bunting down here. You feel it lower in your Achilles. At first, it does kind of feel like you're gonna pop out, but it does break in really nice. The next thing you'll see is the shank on the Flotros is the same size as the Curry Flow 9. It goes from midfoot all the way to forefoot, giving you some cantilevering. However, it is not as thick or as strong as it's much more flexible. If you just look at the jump height test, I got 37.5 centimeters on the four Flotro, which recently more elite shoes have been getting into the 40 centimeter range. And on these, you can just feel it when you're jumping. My first jump was around 39.40, but once I got to the later stages of the jump test, because I do a bunch of them and average them together, these really just were not giving me the bending and the diving board effect that the Curry Flow 9s were giving because that shank is just so stiff under the ball of your foot. So your foot's having to do a lot more work in the Flow 4s 
versus in the Flow 9s, but that also comes with a lot more stability. And what I mean by that is the stack of foam underneath your foot in the four Flow Tros is a lot smaller as well. But that also brings you a lot closer to the ground, especially where it's the most important. Now on the backside, it is only about a millimeter smaller of a stack. However, in the forefoot, that drop is a lot steeper. So the ball of your foot is contacting the ground a lot more intimately in the Flow Tros versus the Nines. Now that in and of itself isn't all that bad for an ankle sprain or having you higher up off the ground like in the Nines. However, in the Curry Flow 9, a lot of that foam is centered under your big toe joint. And what that's gonna do is tilt you over. Now that's already getting you about 10 to 15% of the way to an ankle sprain. So if you got someone like Steph Curry in there who's already wearing an ankle brace and then you put foam under the big toe joint like that, you're already setting somebody up to get a little bit more unstable. Versus here in the Flow Tros, you do not feel that at all. It is more of a flat, more even forefoot with a lower stack of foam. So you're feeling the ground more, a lot more tactile sensation, a lot easier to stay stable. And that continues all the way into the heel where the heel of the four Flow Tro is more wide set and more broad, letting you sink into the court more. So it kind of feels like there's a hovercraft almost around you. So with the four Flow Tros, you're getting a lot more mechanical stability in the midsole and more kind of perceived stability in the uppers. And what I found was the most surprising upgrade or change, it kind of depends on what kind of player you are, was the tackiness of the outsole. Now remember, Flow Foam is made of the same compound as diaper elastic is made out of. So it is a little bit more of an elastic, a little bit more of a springy material. And then the bottom is coated here to give it a little bit more durability so that you can use it as a midsole and outsole combination. Now typically Flow Foam is made for you to be able to, you know, no pun intended, well, I guess it is by Under Armour, but you allow it to flow to the next step. It doesn't really stick to the ground. It produces stability more from surface area content allowing a little bit more of an easy or flowing type gait, whether it be for running or in basketball with these. However, on the Flow Tros, they're a lot more tacky. I actually was stumbling over my feet because I assumed they were gonna be the same as the Flow 9s. So when I was on the court, I kind of thought they were gonna give a little bit, but that's just kind of the footwork style that these kind of make you use. Whereas on the 4s, you just stick to the ground. They have unbelievable traction. They're like the Luca 1s. And so a few times I actually found myself stumbling over my own feet until I kind of got used to them. But then once you do get used to them, you find that these have a lot of pivoting power. And if you look at the durometer of this rubber, it comes in at a three versus 5.5 on the Curry Flow 9s. So this is also a softer formulation of Flow Foam versus on the Flow 9s. So if you can read the tea leaves, either number one, Under Armour is upgrading the Flow Foam for the next iteration of the Currys, the Flow 10, or on the Flow Tro line of shoes or the retro line of Curry shoes, they're using a tackier foam or foam rubber combination. And at first that was a little hard for me to wrap my head around as a foot doctor, because at least in my opinion, it was the give of the Flow foam that it doesn't stick and let your body roll over it was really the only thing that kept this shoe even moderately stable. And then when you add a lot of tack to the flow foam, it would introduce a little bit more of that pivot and roll type motion that causes an ankle sprain. However, once I kind of started thinking about it and playing on them more and more, I found that because these give you a little bit more of a reliable grip on the court, that the ankle brace can kind of work a little bit better because when you're pivoting and turning on these, as long as you know that these are gonna grab the court well, well then you can have a little bit more confidence in your movement from step to step. Also, because Steph Curry is such a quick shooter, typically he's getting the ball and it's out of his hands within a millisecond, right? Because he's being guarded so heavily. So I kind of found in these, if you can pivot a little bit easier, you can get the ball out of your hands a little bit quicker. So maybe the tackiness in the four flow tro was because he wanted to be able to shoot quicker, not so much because of ankle sprain protection, right? I kind of found you saw a lot of times in the NBA finals or just during the year, the ball would get to him and then all of a sudden it's out of his hands where the camera could pan to him. So I would think maybe because the flow foam in the nines just was giving a little bit more give, yeah, you can pivot easier and turn easier and kind of get a little bit more of that ice skating action. Whereas if you're just trying to get the ball out of your hands and kind of get stable for that shot, a little bit more tackiness underneath of you can actually give you a little bit more of an advantage. And one of the last, but certainly not least reasons Steph was using the fours versus the nines is their fit. They don't taper as hard as the Curry Flow nines. So if you are somebody with a higher arch foot or a more high 
high volume foot in these because they have more of that hot dog bun type shape. They don't taper as hard in the midfoot. They are gonna accommodate more foot types and bulkier ankle braces at that. And remember with less taper in the shoe means more stability because the outside of your foot isn't exposed like on some other shoes that have more of a C-shaped. Yeah, those shoes are gonna be a little bit more aerodynamic and quick. However, these ones, a lot more stable. And because of the elastic in them, they are just going to fit a little bit, kind of a different foot type. If you're gonna have lumps and bumps from arthritis or bunions or Taylor's bunions, these are gonna do a lot better versus the Flow 9s. They're still not the widest shoe on earth, but they're definitely a lot more accommodating. But just as important of a question, you know, should these be a buy for you? Now, I definitely think you gotta be an indoor player only to use these. I mean, if you look at the outsole durability test of the Dremel I did on these, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, I mean, it ripped right through the treads, I mean, all the way down to the base of them, and this is only about a one to two millimeter tread depth. So don't use these on an outdoor court. They're just too soft. Even though on an outdoor court, I got 14.63 seconds on these on the shuttle test, which is a darn good time for a shoe that's not meant for outdoor courts. Just shows you how much confidence you can have in these going side to side and how easily they do pick up speed for something that's not built as an aerodynamic streamlined shoe. And number two, because these are a tackier compound, if you're used to the Curry Flow 9 and like that feel, you actually might not like these all that much. I know for me, I had a much better time playing in the fours than the nines, not just for my foot type, but just all around playing. I thought these were just a little bit more forgiving of a shoe. If you are someone that needs a little bit more of that diving board assist with jumping or jump shots, or if your legs are getting tired after a little bit longer of playing, yeah, the nines are gonna be a lot better. They're gonna keep the ball of your foot a little bit fresher. If you're used to your vertical over the course of a basketball game in the flow nines, just remember your feet might get you a little bit more time those first couple games you play in the four flow tro, but after a while your muscles should adapt and you should be just fine. But of course, love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you think it was a good call for Steph to wear the four flow tro in the NBA Finals? And are you looking to pick a pair of these up? Let me know down below. And if you do want to see the deep dive into the older sibling of the Curry Four Flow Tro, the Curry Flow Nine, make sure you click in this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect rubber and foam, and of course diaper elastic. I'll see you in the next video.